Hello, everyone, and welcome at another episode here at the Cusp of Freedom. I'm your host for this podcast, Marvin Tikio, and today I have a very special friend of mine, Melissa. Melissa or oh, actually, I should let her introduce herself. Welcome. Thanks. Good to be here. Um, my name's Melissa. Um, I'm from Kansas City, Missouri, and I've been a digital nomad for almost three years now. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, so, Melissa has a very interesting story that I want to share on this podcast today, hoping to shine some perspective and philosophy which you can take with you in your in your lives. So without further ado, we'll jump straight into it. So um, Melissa, what do, you, what do you do for a living as a digital nomad? So right now, I run projects and operations at a tech startup based out of Baltimore, but our team is fully distributed. So meaning that we have uh, employees all over the world. Oh wow, and how long have you been doing this for your whole um, digital nomad, um, I guess, career or experience? Sure, so this job I've been doing for about seven months, but I have before that I was a project manager at a smaller tech startup. Basically. Oh, okay, okay. But it was all remote. Have you, um, did you, how did you get into tech? Did you go to college for tech or? I did not, I have a marketing degree before social media, so I have a useless degree, <laughs> essentially. Um, I, after college, started working like an office job, like what people do, right? Um, I was super bored with it, and I started walking dogs on the side, uh, staying at my friend's house as well. They were out of town, wow. dog sitting for them. Um, I quit corporate America when I was like what seven or eight years ago, I guess. No, ten years ago. Um, and then uh, I owned a dog walking business for five years. So oh, wow. I owned a pet care business in Kansas City. Um, scaled it, had a fair, you know, had a had a, a good business, good service range. Um, I would take three months off a year and I would backpack. So I would go. Interesting. Yeah, so I would travel. My first trip, I left the country when I was 29 for the first time. Okay. Um, and I did Belize, Guatemala, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Costa Rica. Came back and I was like, all I want to do is travel, right? Interesting. So um, it took me a couple more years. I did like Southeast Asia circuit. I went to Australia and Japan and just kind of like went to uh, South uh, Southeast Asia wow. a couple times. Um, and then when I came back on my last trip to the Philippines, I was like, I need to travel full time. I need to sell the business. I need to learn something that will like make me travel. So, um, on my last trip, I was in Bali and just kind of asking people who I who told me they were traveling and working, like, what do you do? And they're like, you tech. They're like, tech is like the thing, the best thing you can do for the money. Basically, like the least amount of work for the most amount of money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To maximize your time. Right? I agree. I second that. Yeah. Right. So, um, so I was like, cool. I'm gonna learn how to code. Mm-hmm. So I went home. Um, I bought two ten dollar courses on Udemy. You know Udemy, it's mm-hmm. like a, a learning platform. Like Coursera, it's the same thing. Okay. So I spent twenty dollars. I learned how to code over eighteen months. So you spent twenty dollars and eighteen months to learn how to code. Yeah. Interesting. And yeah, so then I got a job in Kansas City, knowing I was going to go remote as a front end designer and developer, UI UX stuff. Realized like I'm a terrible. I'm like the world's worst developer. <laughs> Interesting. But I'm really good at project management, so I started doing PM for them, and then. Now, um, sold the business to one of my employees. It's still going today. So, so that's my whole deal. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Did you sell your your pet walking business or which business? Yeah, I sold the dog walking business, the pet care business, to one of my employees. Okay, okay. So back up when 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 you're out of college and you start working at corporate. What what clicks for you that makes you want to not work at corporate no more? It just makes you want to start your own business. Yeah, with, uh, that's a good like, question. What click? So I worked at a at a big big engineering firm, like okay. huge huge company, and I was an admin there, which is like a terrible job. And I just it was twofold. One, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't make a difference, right? Like there was so much bureaucracy and like like steps you had to take to do anything. Um, that I just was like, I don't want to do this. And also, I just saw the people who worked there for 20 years, 30 years, and they just Uh. looked dead, like, in their (laughs) eyes. And they were just, like, people who were just, like, going through life with, with... Nothing, just living in the motion. So you, like, so you, basi- so you basically told yourself, I don't want to be like that in yeah. 20 years. Yeah, basically, yeah. And <laughs> even though, like, obviously, it's a huge risk, right? Because you have yeah. health insurance, and it's like you see the path of like how you can grow in the company. But yeah. at the end of the day, it's like for what? You yeah. know what I mean? So that is so deep. Yeah. So I was just like, <laughs> I gotta not do this. I didn't know what it was at the time. I didn't know like what it was gonna be, but I knew it had to be something. And then the dogs kind of. I just started doing that. I would do it for free because I love animals. Okay. Um, but I was 24 at the time, so I was like partying and going to CrossFit. And, like I didn't have any time to own a pet myself. Yeah. But all my neighbors had animals, and I'd be like, I'll watch them while you're out of town. I did it for free for a long time, and then I was like, I should start charging people for this, right? Yeah. 
so I started charging people like a little bit, thirty dollars a night or something, okay. and then fifty, and then so on and so on. And then I, at one point, I was taking off like Christmas and Thanksgiving from my corporate job because I would make more money doing what dog, dog, dog <laughs> than I would working. So wow. I was like, I'm just gonna quit my job. <laughs> wow, wow, because it doesn't make sense to work when you can do something yeah. that doesn't feel like work and, and you can make it. Within two months, I was making more money walking dogs than I did working corporate. Wow, so some advice for you out there that want to be dog walkers. Walk dogs. <laughs> it's, um, it's, a, it's a good first step. Yeah, no, it's like a, you gotta go, I would say like, in the business, a domestic style business, you have to legitimize yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Like I got pet CPR and first aid certified. I did bonding and insurance. I licensed myself. Like that oh, wow. sets you apart when you're going to do like kind of a, like a kitschy side business or yeah. whatever. Like make it legit, make it an actual business and not just like, oh, I do this for fun, right? Nice, like it nice. can be fun, but also if you put yourself like, if you present yourself as a business, then it's, you're a business. Yeah, you're a business. Yeah. More legitimate and more yeah, business. Totally. That's, that's, that's some pretty good, cool advice. So. So given that you you had that 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 setup where your work didn't really feel like work and you was you were a legitimate business and you mm -hmm. were making profit and you could even take up to three months for vacation, which mm -hmm. is like unheard of yeah. for most American <laughs> jobs. Um, what clicked then? Oh, I guess when you did that three months, you realized that you want to just travel full time. Yeah, like my brain is weird, right? So like I was just like I did the thing. I started the business. I grew the business. <laughs> I was bored of the business honestly <laughs> i loved it in the sense of like you get to play with dogs all day right yeah but i wanted something different and because pet care specifically in kansas city is very relational kansas city is a very like they want to see you they want to know me did you grow up in kansas city no i grew up in the um on the countryside of st louis and the illinois side of st louis oh wow would you say because i'm not very familiar but would you say your environment um gave you like an advantage yeah sort of? of course yeah like I lived in the neighborhood I worked in. I was lucky my best friend bought a house and I lived with her for like six years. So, oh, nice. Um, and we lived in like a family neighborhood. Like, so of course it did, right? Mm. You know, because I, like I said, I worked for all my neighbors and their friends and, you know, yeah. so it was very word of mouth. And, um, and like I said, I, I, I wasn't their neighborhood kid, you know, I was oh, I see, like I an adult. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So, when you when you decided to stop doing the or sell to sell you, I don't know if you sold it immediately or if you had somebody else run it while you yeah. looked for a job. But when you decided to basically go into tech after getting that advice from people and you know taking this eighteen months, I mean I guess that was like a pretty huge challenge taking eighteen months just to just to learn how to code. Would you what would you say is the hardest part through that journey? Because I think for most people that do want to switch to tech, I think that's like one of the biggest. Um, like learning curve, yeah. like or like it can be. I feel like it can be discouraging. Mm -hmm. I feel like it can be like you know, I, I'm not I'm not suited for this. So what 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 was going through your mind during those 18 months, and how did you how did you tweak your brain <laughs> to, to to go through with it? Yeah. Um. Well, a couple of things. One, I had an end goal. I wanted to travel. I wanted to be full time. I wanted to sell all my stuff and be out of the states, right? Okay. So I kept my end goal in mind every single day. And honestly, consistency. Mm. Um, the thing is, to learn development, it's not expensive. You can find everything online for free. Mm. You know what I mean? Like you Google, you Google like online courses. Work, yeah, full stack developer. You could do free co camp you know, for nothing. Yeah. It's about doing it, showing up for yourself every single day, honestly. So I kind of, I kind of like made my whole schedule around, I need to work on this two hours a day, every single seven days a week. Mm. And that was it. Like I knew to get to my end goal, that's what I needed to do. Every day, seven days a week for 18 months. 18 months. Yeah. Wow. That's, I, I, yeah. I would say you're pretty. I'm <laughs> very stubborn. I'm very stubborn. <laughs> And determined to get what you want, yeah. apparently. That's, yeah. that's, that's some, so your perspective on this is anybody can do it, no matter whether they come from an environment that's you know, less advantaged or whatever. It, it depends on whether they show up for themselves or not. I mean, yeah, certainly, again, like I recognize that my environmental aspects were easier, right? Mm. And that like I had an income the whole time. Mm. Like I had a good place to live. I had a passive income business, you know? So of course that, uh, that does affect it, okay. right? But with that being said, I know a lot of people who do try it and they think, oh my God, I'm never gonna be able to do this. But I'm like, just try it tomorrow, right? Mm. Like it's the start of anything, yeah. right? It's like, just try it tomorrow and try it the next day. Don't think of it as like this grand thing in the end. Yeah. But just think of it as like, I just, like people are like, oh, I wanna get 
abs, right? Like yeah. I want to get an eight pack. I'll never get there, right? And I'm like, well, just go to the gym tomorrow, you know, and then the next day, and then you eventually just becomes habit, and then habit turns into something better, Interesting. right? So, what are your what are you what is your advice for anyone watching about like making consistent habits? Like, if I, I mean, I think I think I think if it was as easy as it sounds, that like everybody would have good habits. So, what do you think are some things that like can take you off track? Or I think don't try to do too much at once. It's like the New okay. Year's Day philosophy, right? Everybody's like, New Year's Day, I'm gonna go to the gym. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna eat sugar. I'm gonna sleep eight hours. I'm like, well, just try and do one of those things for a little while and mm. see what happens. Like, and then try to do another thing and see what happens. You know, it's like don't try to do too much at once. Just try mm. to do one thing at a time, and then like let the habits kind of build on themselves. Because Interesting. If you're trying to get healthier, usually if you start going to the gym you don't want to eat pizza all day. You mm. know what I mean? So then it's like, okay, well then you start eating a little healthier and then you're tired because you're going to the gym. Yeah. So you start sleeping, you know? So it's yeah. kind of like, the, don't try to do it all at once. Just let it happen naturally. Naturally. Over time. Okay. Well, yeah, that sounds good. And live in the moment, I guess. Um, so when you, I guess now that you're in tech, what are some of the challenges you would say? Like if you could go back and see yourself in tech right now, would you say that you're happy with the choice you've made? Or would you have preferred to have less stress? I don't know how much stress you're facing in tech right now, mm. but I know for a lot of developers, one of the main challenges is feeling burnt out, mm. like they're, they're being overworked. But I guess from your experience, it might be a little different because you're in like the management role. Mm -hmm. So how does it feel being in tech and working remote or working from anywhere in the world? And like, what are some of the challenges that you have to face um, like on a daily basis in regards to work-life balance? Sure. So the main challenge of working, I, I, not just in tech, but any, I think, full-time intense job, because it's an intense, tech is intense, right? Yeah. We all, you know that, I know that. Like, um, is finding and creating your own work-life balance because I can work from anywhere, which is amazing, right? But also, I can work from the beach and I can work on vacation and I can work on my mom's birthday trip and I can mm -hmm. work. So it's like making sure that you are actually taking the time to disconnect. That's my biggest struggle mm -hmm. because I'll, I took two week vacation recently and I realized I hadn't taken a vacation and it's since my last backpacking trip at the end of 2018. Wow. Right. Because it was like, Oh, I'm on a friend's trip. I can just work, you know, because I work from anywhere anyways. So yeah. it's like, being on like you know how now when you're on an airplane you can work because there's because there's Wi-Fi yeah taking that three hours off my computer because it's okay to take that time Done, right yeah. um, that's the biggest challenge of having a hyper intense job and traveling because I, my laptop is my my work so it's just anywhere I am so saying like I'm gonna take the day off next Friday I could work you know probably six hours next Friday if I yeah. wanted to but I'm like no Take the day off, leave your laptop at home. Work will still be there on Monday. Yeah. Like, it's not, <laughs> not going, going anywhere. Away. <laughs> um, and I'd say, like, that's a very common challenge amongst the digital nomads. And a, a big struggle amongst the community is, like, is having that, you know, mindset of, like, oh, grind, 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 hustle, right? But yeah. then at the end of the day, it's like, no, you have to recover as well. Yeah, you, you have know? to take time for yourself. Yeah. That's true. Um, so what do you, what would you say throughout your, your, your journey to becoming, um, a tech leader sort of where you at today what would you say is one of the biggest challenge or point of adversity that you've had to like overcome um i'm as a lot of people are i'm my worst enemy right so as i'm going through all of this these courses and everything i'm like you can't learn this you're not smart enough to do this like i barely graduated college like there's no way <laughs> right? like, you know like that was kind of always my wow. thing i'm like I, i'm like you can't who are you you know what i mean that kind of like i like in my just kind of overcoming my own negative interesting things about it because i'm like i'm a midwest middle class human you know what i mean like my parents never really travel outside of the states i didn't leave the country till i was 29 so i'm like uh, the, people like me don't do things like this don't you know? we don't we yeah you know so it's just kind of like overcoming that and just staying confident in my choices and my decisions you know I guess it's like a bit of imposter syndrome in a capacity. Right? Wow, overcoming your doubts. Yeah. And doubts can be, uh, oh, I hate to say it, but a bitch. Uh. It's a real pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah, doubt can be something. Um, so, you said you started traveling at 29. Yeah. Um, how, how, do you think, how do you think traveling shaped your perspective when you... I know, I know you came back and you just decided to go into tech. That's like a thing you learned after traveling the first time. Yeah. But how do you think it changed your perspective of the world? No. Or your perception of the yeah. world? I mean, 
I just had no perception of the world before that. Right? Interesting. Like I didn't have, I always, like even as a kid, I was always super interested. I remember like having a globe, like I had one of those globes that had like the little mountains on it. I don't yeah. know if you ever, and I just remember like just spinning it all day and just kind of running my fingers across the mountains and just like looking at, and then looking up different countries and stuff. Like I always was so curious about everything, but I just didn't have a lot of exposure mm. like to different, I mean, certainly some different cultures, but I mean, you know, when you're just kind of in the middle of the country, you're not really getting the exposure yeah. that you are in New York or LA, Miami, that's Chicago, true, that's whatever, true. right? Like existing city. in that, right? Yeah. You know, so I would say like the biggest, I guess, perspective point I learned or whatever is just like people are people everywhere. People have the same wants and needs, <laughs> yeah. right? And yeah. that's such a stupid thing to think, but people don't, that's my number one question I get when I come back. It's like, what are people like out, out you know, all over? <laughs> yeah. Like people, people. Man. Like, just, <laughs> people just want to be safe and they just want to take care of their families and yeah. you know what I mean like Same that's ones. really it so I would say like obviously it shifted my world perspective massively just that but also like finding a whole community of people that I really connected with that I didn't know existed yeah. right that was super cool too just being like oh my god like all of these awesome people I keep meeting all over the world it's just like <laughs> I didn't you know I thought I didn't think I was doing anything new, but at the same time, I was just it was so different than what I knew. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so. sure, that's true. So why do you why do you think most Americans don't have passports? We got a lot of country to see. Like you know, I think I think it's just like you get a lot of the um, a lot of like the nature or like you know what I mean. You can get desert, you can get mountains, you can get beach, you can get anything. Anything in America in yeah. the states. Um, in the middle of the country, it's very expensive to get out of the country, right? Mm. Because we don't live, and a lot of people don't live near like a super major international airport, airport yeah. right? So it's like, for me, I have to fly from Kansas City to Chicago or LA, Dallas, Miami, and mm. then a flight out of the country. No way. Yeah, because we don't, who's, who's flying internationally directly to Kansas City, right? Oh. Ah. Yeah. So, and a lot of people, that's very common amongst the middle of the country, right? Wow. Like, you're not near a... In National Airport, yeah. Yeah, a huge, huge hub. Or it's extremely expensive. Like, I always tell people, people in home ask me, like, how do you afford all these flights? I'm like, no, what you do is you fly on points to a big airport, airport. and then you fly from there. It saves thousands of dollars. Wow, yeah. yeah. Man, I, didn't, I, never, I never thought of it that way. But you're right. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're in the middle of the country. Yeah. You're pretty much screwed. Yeah. Hey. Okay, so, ciao. So, I guess... Did you feel like you were challenging yourself the first time you traveled? Yeah. Or people were like, you're crazy or how was... No, absolutely. I called like, okay, so my best friend and her sister had backpacked quite a bit before. That's kind of how I like knew that it was a thing. Yeah. Right? Um, and they're like, no, it's not expensive. You just have to ha have, to have the time to take to go. Yeah. Perfect. So have the time. I remember I went to Cancun on family vacation with my mom, my brother, and his partner. And then uh, my mom and, like, my family left. And I remember I went, like, with my backpack to the Cancun bus station, mm. the Adeo, which is now funny because I've been there hundreds of times since then. But right. at that moment, I was so terrified. I was <laughs> literally shaking. I was crying. I called my best friend. I was like, I don't, I can't, I don't think I can do this. Like, it just, <laughs> it felt so intense, right? Because yeah. it was very boring to me yeah now i go there and i'm like i'm gonna get a subway sandwich i'm gonna hang out there's <laughs> wi-fi like i'm good you know but in that moment because i just never been anywhere like that it was i was so scared and they're like my my best friend was like just give it two days and mm -hmm. if you because i was taking an overnight bus to belize city and then going out to the islands she's like just give it a couple days if you get out to the islands and you're still like no then come home mm -hmm. but just try right mm -hmm. so I get out there, and within like two days, I was like, ah, fuck it, I'm not, you know, this is it, right? That's true, that's true. And I was good, but no, it was terrifying. Like, it was so scary in the beginning, but then I kind of just like let go of it and just like let whatever happened happen. Happens. And it was everything, it was amazing, and it was scary, and it was fun, and it was, I was sick, and you know, it was just. Everything you want to get out of an adventure. Exactly, basically. yeah, 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 yeah. So then I was like, oh, I'm addicted to this. <laughs> so. <laughs> Oh wow! I, I guess like traveling opens a lot of like challenges. Like you challenge yourself to to go out of your comfort zone. I guess in a yeah. sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And would you say that's helped you develop as a person? And if so, what are some what are some challenges you 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 face when traveling solo? Like what are some challenges you feel like every digital nomad goes through, depending on like the length of their travel? Mm. Um, and how do you? I guess, how do you cope with your, with your challenges when you travel? Sure. So it's, it's, 
interesting because like there's backpacking and then there's like the long term right yeah so backpacking like everything is super fun and everything's new and you're moving every couple of days and it's like whoa look at this cool thing and then partying and partying and then you're like out right <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it's just like constant adrenaline for months right and yeah. then you get home and you crash out and you go back to your real life and think about leaving every day and then you know <laughs> but like long term travel like you have to really like learn how to have a regular existence mm. here right like I think that's probably that's a that's a big challenge I think that that I had not overcome but just kind of adjust to yeah um being like okay you need to sleep and you need to eat well and you need to go to the gym and you need to work and you need to like have a regular life a habit like yeah a habit exactly like a, like a yeah just like uh, a normal life but here right mm -hmm. um obviously <laughs> I mean, loneliness certainly comes and goes, right? Mm. Depending on where you're at. Like, I've had a couple of months at a time where I, like, don't meet anybody. And I'm just mm. kind of, like, in an Airbnb alone. I'm like, this kind of fucking sucks, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but but you adjust. And I'm like, in those times, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to enjoy the city I'm in, right? Because yeah. I'm in this super cool place. And, like, let's just fall in love with the city for a couple months, you know, and do that. Yeah. And then go back somewhere where you know. Like, I come back here because I have friends here. Like, this place is great, you know? Mm. Um and then obviously the main challenge is finding Wi-Fi. No, but, <laughs> <laughs> no, but having, um, but on that, being in places where you know the connectivity is good enough. If you're I, working. If you're working. Yeah. yeah if you're the long-term digital nomad, like that's honestly. <laughs> the biggest. <laughs> it's so, like people knock Starbucks like so much, but let me tell you, everywhere in the world, Starbucks has Wi-Fi. Yeah. And I have run in my rain jacket, holding my laptop in the rain, to make meetings at Starbucks. Starbucks has saved my job like a couple of times. So. It has actually saved mine too, so I can relate a little yeah, bit. Yeah, like, you know, but just being able to like, okay, I'm in a new place. Is the connectivity good? Can I get healthy food? Is it safe? Is it, you know, like, can I get to the gym? Can I, can I exist here as a person? Mm. Like, I have backpacked and traveled to many places. That's not the case, right? Mm. I love to visit, like, be I love visiting beach towns. I can't live in beach towns mm. because... It's just like, it's just too inconsistent. I don't know, like I, I prefer to live in the city where I feel like I can get yeah, all the things yeah. and then visit a beach for a month or so. That's true. And That's just true. kind of live with the inconsistency. But like Medellin is great because it it's a good livable city. It is. You know? I agree, I agree. Yeah. Mm, interesting. So what do you think is, um, what, 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 what philosophy do you live by? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, it's so hokey, but it's just like create your own destiny. Interesting. You know what I mean? Like you, there's a lot of things we can't control, but focus on the things that you can mm. and do it. it. Just, you know what I mean? Like yeah. don't, don't be afraid of the start of things. Yeah. Just start it and see what happens. You yeah. know, give it a try and then just see what, see what happens. Do you think a lot of like, a lot of um, ideas, a lot of great ideas and a lot of great, um, things go to waste because people don't just start things or yeah. they just don't believe in themselves them. yeah people get so caught up in the details of any large idea that they can't just do it mm. you know it just um, that, again like with starting a business or with wanting to travel or learning to code or anything or working out or anything it's like just start with one thing you yeah. know and yeah, I absolutely, I know friends who have these amazing ideas and I'm like, that's a good idea, but they can never get it off the ground yeah. because they don't ever, they're never bad at it. It's like yeah. the suck at something, like be a, be like a, what is, there's like that little quote that's like be, um, don't be afraid to suck at something or don't be afraid to start, <laughs> that's, you know? That, that sounds good. Don't yeah. be afraid to suck. Yeah. Just don't like, just because the first version of anything is shit, right? Yeah. So it's just like, give it a My try. My first episode of this podcast is like, yeah. Yeah, but no, but seriously, you're starting something. You're doing something. That's fucking cool, you know? Yeah, so I'm glad you just, think it's cool. Yeah. Um, well, I, I guess I want to wrap it up because I don't want to make it too long. But um, I might have you on forever for this, I guess, round two interview, though. Okay. So is there, like, any last key of advice you want to leave the audience with today? Anything that they can take with them and maybe implement in their lives to be better, to have better habits, be better, I don't know. Yeah, just don't be afraid to start. Just do one thing. Just try tomorrow and see what happens. <laughs> okay, that sounds yeah. good. Well, thank you so much for, yeah, for being on the podcast. You. And, Anytime. And um, until next time, stay tuned, guys. All right, bye. Nice, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. Was that all right? Yeah, I think that was great. Okay. Wow. Wow. Quota, thank God. Like 25 minutes.